Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode in the history of medicine. Now if you remember our previous video we were looking at Jane Simpson, P for pain, and I had introduced Joseph Lister, ER for germs. And this video is all about the work of Lister. Now, Simpson, remember, he sorted out pain, one of the big problems in surgery. Lister, he's more interested and concentrating on the problem of infection. Before we get to the story of Lister, we have to go back maybe 20 years and look at another man, another very famous doctor. And he had a great name, Dr. Ignaz Semmelweis, one of my favourite men in the history of medicine. Now, his story is a sad one, ladies and gentlemen. Just quickly, here's what he did. 1846, 1847. He was a doctor in a hospital in Vienna, in Austria, and he was working in wards where there were pregnant women. And he noticed that there was a very, very high death rate from a disease called purpural fever, sometimes called childbed fever, childbirth. And it was something actually that uh, back in history had killed Jane Seymour, one of Henry VIII's wives. So he notices that many of the women, once they'd given birth, a few days later, were dying from this disease. Now, what was his idea? Well, quite simply, he said to the doctors in his ward, why don't we wash our hands? Hardly uh, revolutionary, is it? Not now, but back then it was. He said, let's wash our hands in chloride of lime solution. And he made people in his ward wash their hands. What happened to the death rate? Well, of course, not surprisingly, it went down. But people still opposed his ideas. Why? Well, it's extra work. It was unpleasant. So they said, no, we're not doing that. Because, Dr. Semmelweis, if you're so smart, how is it working? What's happening here? And of course, poor old Ignat Semmelweis couldn't explain because it was before 1861 and therefore it was before Pasteur's germ theory. So he couldn't explain it. People mocked him. They stopped using his ideas. The death rate went back up. He left, he became a drunkard, and he ended up in an asylum. And he actually died in the asylum. Unfortunately for him, just weeks before Pasteur's germ theory is widely accepted, one of the great nearly men of history. But he was onto something, this idea of washing hands. Now, we go forward. Of course, Louis Pasteur and germ theory he brings change. How did that affect surgery here in Britain? Well, this is where Joseph Lister comes in. Now, Lister was a top surgeon, okay, worked up in Scotland. And in the 1860s, of course, he read Pasteur's germ theory. Communication is important. He read it and he gets an idea. Aha, maybe these germs or microbes in the air, maybe they are causing infection, which is killing my patients. When I operate and amputate arms or legs, many of them die from infection. Maybe it's these germs in the air that are causing it. This is Lister's idea. So what does he do? Pooey, Carlisle's very smelly. Now, I'm not being nasty to the people of Carlisle, lovely town. Everywhere was smelly at that time because it was the Industrial Revolution and there was factory and waste everywhere. But in Carlisle, the council had started to use a new chemical called carbolic acid to clear up the waste and the sewage. Lister has his brainwave. At last, he says, now then, why don't I use this carbolic acid? 
in my operations. And in 1865, he starts to cover the bandages in carbolic acid. And he first used it on an 11 year old boy whose leg had been crushed by the wheel of a cart. It had caused a compound fracture. So the bone had come through the skin. At that time, compound fractures often led to infection, which often led to death. 1865, Lister starts to use the carbolic acid. The boy survived. He begins solving the problem of infection. Now, he then improves his technique. Instead of just soaking the bandages in the carbolic acid, he develops almost like a spray, like we have today, to sort of spray under our arms. A carbolic acid spray. And it covered the patients, it covered the wound, it covered the hands, it covered the equipment, the knives, the scalpels, all covered in this sort of mist of carbolic acid. What would that do? Well, carbolic acid. Remember, it was first used on waste, sewage. Well, I suppose you could say human waste is not always a waste of time. Because here, Lister is using it for good reasons and good purposes. He's got the idea. And now he's saying carbolic acid can help me make surgery safer. So he uses it. Now, although he was a great surgeon, before he used carbolic acid, 46% of the patients he operated on, amputating arms and legs, 40%, 46% died. After he uses carbolic acid, the death rate goes down to 15%. Progress, cheerful Charlie change, superb, great news. Strangely, one of those strange things in history, Mr. Lister even operated on his sister, Mr. Lister's sister. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, sadly, his sister, a woman called Isabel, she developed what we would now refer to as breast cancer, and he used carbolic acid on her in the operation, and she survived for another three years. So carbolic acid seems to be an answer. Remember this chap, James Simpson? Well, he was very critical of Lister. 1867, they got involved in an exchange of letters and they are critical. Oh, your, your idea's rubbish. Use my idea. No, my idea works. So there was opposition to Lister and Simpson was involved in that opposition. Why would there be opposition to something as good as this? Have you got any ideas? No progress. Why? Well, here's a couple for you. Number one, the carbolic acid spray. It begins to fall down. It got into the eyes. It got onto the hands. Well, it's acid. It irritated the eye. It irritated the skin on the hands. It was unpleasant, it was uncomfortable, it was extra work. Also, some people in the early days, 1865, 66, 67, they still didn't fully believe Pasteur's germ theory. So they're saying, why are we doing this extra work? I don't believe in these microbes. It was extra work, as I've said. Something else, some of the doctors who did believe Lister and carbolic acid used the methods but didn't do it as safely or as effectively or as well organized so therefore they made mistakes and therefore the patient still died and the people who were critical said oh i told you it's rubbish they're dying so there was opposition at first to lister's idea of carbolic acid we've seen this before opposition to great ideas in the history of medicine but gradually slowly people begin to realize that it is working. The death rate is going down. As Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch do more work, people accept the idea of carbolic acid. And we call this surgery antiseptic against poison, 
against the germs, especially when Koch himself discovered the germ for blood poisoning, 1878. This then helps to persuade other doctors that really there is something in this and we must use carbolic acid. By the way, have you ever thought Robert Koch, one of the great men who did loads and loads of work on germs, what country was he born in? Germany. <laughs> you should always be able to remember that. Germs, Germany, of course. Sorry about that. Terrible. Now, antiseptic surgery against poison, against sepsis, against germs. That was the achievement of Lister. 1867 and into the 1870s. His work, therefore, you could say, brought change. It brought progress. Great news. It was a turning point because it led to other things. Now, what did it lead to? Antiseptic surgery became aseptic surgery. Aseptic it's not killing germs, it's trying to create something that is germ-free. So, what's that all about? Well, we move through the 1870s, okay? Germ-free, Robert Koch again, develops a steam steriliser, very high temperature, 120 degrees C, sterilising, killing the germs on all the equipment. We move into the 1880s to an American doctor, William Halstead. Now, he was using all of the ideas of Lister, of course, carbolic acid. Remember what I said about the hands, the skin on the hands? Well, one of Halstead's nurses had very sort of uh, eczema on her skin, very, very sensitive skin. And the carbolic acid was making a mess of her hands. Now, Halstead, he said, mm, that's not very good. And particularly because the very nurse that her hands were being sort of made very, very uncomfortable. She was his fiance. She was going to marry William Halstead. And she's moaning, and going, look at my hands, this carbolic acid. Can you do anything about it? And do you know what Halstead did? He went for a ride in a Grand Prix racing car. No, he didn't, you silly boy. But he did contact a company called Goodyear. Goodyear. Do they make tyres for the radio, the Formula One? Do they? Yes, they do. Goodyear. It's a rubber company. So, Halstead contacts Goodyear Rubber Company. And what do you think they come up with, ladies and gentlemen? Of course, what we now know as rubber gloves. So that would be quite a different thing because if you are using the carbolic acid, oh well, great, that's no problem because of course your glove will be on. Your hand is safe in your glove. If I could only get it on. There we go. Much better. So people begin to use rubber gloves. Now, there's no germs at all. Excellent. It's an improvement on antiseptic. And other people then say, well, if you're covering your hands, why don't we cover our hair? And they begin to have hats on. And then they say, aha, I know. Why don't we cover our mouths as well? So we get gloves. We get masks. We get surgical gowns, surgical caps. We are moving to aseptic, germ-free surgery 1880s this was better than killing the germs creating an environment of no germs okay so i suppose you could say halstead it was a good year to fall in love good year to fall in love sorry sorry about that i apologize okay but you know when they said to dr halstead why did you do that? You know, he said, well, really, it was simple. I'd fallen in glove. <laughs> sorry, sorry, no more jokes. I apologize. So by the time we reach 1900, thanks to the work of 
some very important people. Surgery and medicine was making progress. It was improving. We've had Simpson with pain. We had Ignat Semmelweis washing our hands and people ignoring him. We've had Joseph Lister and carbolic acid. And we've had Halstead and aseptic gloves masks. I'm asking you, were they good ideas? I'm asking you, were they good ideas? Sorry, sorry, no more jokes. So, to finish, ladies and gentlemen, by 1900, surgery had definitely changed. Progress had occurred. How important was Joseph Lister? Was he more important than Simpson? Yes? No? Were they both important? Why? Can you explain? Is antiseptic surgery important because it leads to aseptic surgery? Change. Progress. Medicine was getting better. 1900, we moved towards the end of the Industrial Revolution. Hope it's been useful. I shall speak to you soon. All the best now.